Yeah, I've got about a minute to install, so... A we'll minute? Buy, we'll buy time. Yeah, I know, a minute. Well, 40-something seconds, and then direct X. And yeah, it's okay, it won't be that long. I want to be Europe. Well, yeah, you can be Europe. I'm okay oh, no, with it's not Europe. actually letting me pick Europe. Oh dear. Uh, right, this game isn't full, is it? Please tell me the game isn't full. I want to be... It is up. not full yet, I think. As long as I open these up like so. Right. Chill, have I forgotten how the heck you pick a nation? Because... It... I thought all you had to do was actually just click the thing. Oh, there... Suddenly it works. Right. Suddenly it doesn't work. Oh right, you have to deselect your own one first before you move on. And the story: Europe may be baby mode, but I'm sitting in Europe, so that's why I'm playing it. And on top of that, the, the thing with Europe is everything's packed pretty damn close. So if your defenses fail. Yeah, not to mention that all the nukes will go flying over Europe. So even if there happen to be a shot down in the great US-Russia gunnery duel, you're pretty much screwed. Right. In any case, for those unfamiliar with DEFCON, DEFCON is global thermonuclear war, as you see in the movie War Games. So, basically, you move around your fleets, your subs, and your air forces, and desperately try to murder the shit out of everyone before they murder the shit out of you. Ironically, it has some of the most civilized multiplayer games. That is, until someone starts winning. Yeah. And then, Jesus Christ. Right, I am no, trying yeah. to load DEFCON. I'm not sure if it has loaded yet. Let me just check my processes. To shift has joined us as well. We're running out of spots, Jamie! We're only two spots I know! Left. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying! Come on, there we go, there we go, it's loading. Ah, <sighs> <Okay. sighs> Shut up. <laughs> Ah, he prefers to ha he prefers to have it pronounced chief. Well then, so far it's me, Sayava, Greta, Chief, and Jamie should be hopping in. Yeah, I should be. It's currently loading. Um, oh God. And uh, Ben wants us to play Payday, and that's not until next time, since it's a multiplayer game. It's basically has to end the, the stream as the thing, so I, d I had already yeah. decided that we would end with DEFCON today, we can end with Payday next time. Which I will also be there for. Do you guys want me to do, like, sportscaster style commentary on thermonuclear war? Hell yes. Okay, retrieving server list. Seriously, the, the last thing I want to hear before all all the air raid sirens thought is, let's get ready to rumble! Oh, god damn it. Or, or, as God is my witness, that land mass is broken in half. Wait, wait, wait a minute, why is Steam Authentication failed? My god, stone cold, my god. Thank you, Steam Authentication. Loathsome Thermonuclear. What's the, uh... S.A. Goon. S.A. Goon. Goon. Okay. Yes. Yep, there we go. Oh, shit. El Presidente mm -hmm. has launched the nuclear weapons. Actually, that actually carries off rather well. I mean, the last thing that we saw in my play of Tropical 3 is that the idiot military on the island of Tropical launches a ICBM trying to hit a hot air balloon. Okay, I'm Unsurprisingly, gonna... the missile misses by a mile, careens off, and probably lands on some other island, thus starting World War Three. That's what we're going to play now. Yep, and I'm going to unwisely pick South America. Viva South America! Viva! 
So where are you placing your bases? Argentina? Brazil? Come on, bro, you can tell me. <laughs> I ain't telling you. In Mexico? Yeah. Are they in Mexico? For those who are unfamiliar with DEF CON, basically the placement of bases is extremely important because if you know where the bases are, you can take them out quicker and any base that has been taken out is literally like lopping off someone's left hand, more or less, in this game. Let's see, Greeder is apparently playing the US. We still have one spot left. Is there no one else who has DEF CON? Shit, buy DEF CON, download it. <laughs> what a full server so that everything just goes instantly crazy. Oh, there we go, we got one more. Ah, Hexagon, welcome, welcome, welcome. Alright, hey. well, uh, yeah. Oh, I also, I have to say that I always found it funny that you actually can't play as Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Australia. It's like the, the risk house rule that no one actually gets to use Australia Oceania for anything, because people always just end up camping down there. Alright, advanced options, everything seems to be in order. City populations are default. Random territories, no. Permit detection, yes. Actually, sure, let's let's have defection activated, which means that we can switch alliances during the game. In case we please. And score mode should be default. Yeah. Alright. Number of people well, murdered. <laughs> yeah, combined with how many nukes you have left when the war is over. Just because, as they say, the, the yeah. only winner in a thermonuclear war is the last guy standing who still has one. Right, okay. Right, I'm placing my radars, um. and then I need to place my silos. And I'll have a second one here. There we go. <laughs> now, silos can be put into two different modes once they're activated. They can either A, be used to launch nuclear missiles, of course, but they can also be put in air defense mode. And while they are in air defense mode, they will shoot down incoming missiles, as well as help with uh, taking care of uh, enemy aircraft. And there are nuclear bombers in this game, which means that there will be nuclear power aircraft with thermonuclear weapons on board. Be careful about those. Next up are the fleets. Fleets can base be very handy in the simple thing that by simply Toiling around, they can sh launch aircraft, but they can also launch all kinds of other stuff. Oh shit, DEFCON 4 soon. DEFCON works exactly as you might imagine for those in chat. Basically, depending on the DEFCON level, you're getting access to different kinds of weapons. Similar to the DEFCON system used by the US Army. And once things go to DEFCON 1, everything is going straight to hell in a handbasket in the worst way. So by that time you want to make sure that everything has been planned out, you have your alliances set, and that everything is in order. Speaking of which, um... Right. Uh, uh, crap. I have As forgotten see, how to yeah, sort alliances. Example, you need to be in DEFCON 3 in order to la launch aircraft. Similarly, in order to launch an ECBM, you need to be in DEFCON 1. Which takes quite a while. Yep. Right. 
A lion says shit. <laughs> See, everyone except me wants to do uh, five times the real time. No, wait, I'm also at five times the real time. I didn't pick that. Cyan is the only one who wants to play in real time, apparently. Oh, um... No, I'm also apparently selected that. Greedy wants to know if it's fine for me to keep... If it's fine for him to listen to the stream or not. And yeah, it's perfectly fine because this is very much basically a... Happy gentle mode, so to speak. Yeah. Right, okay. I wanna stay the hell out the way of those. My fleets are on the way. We have already spotted a Greeda battleship. Um, I've forgotten how you do private messages. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh dear. <laughs> Yeah, you click on the name and then... We are now DEFCON 3, okay. which means that the war has begun. Uh-oh. Here we go. Oh shit, Greeter has joined the orange team. That does not bode well for me. Oh dear. Silv has a silo right here. Launching all the fighters. I could launch some bombers, but that's not really allowed until another DEFCON, right? Okay. Meanwhile, DEFCON 2 and. Oh, uh, here we go. Oh, crap! Wrong attack, wrong attack, wrong attack. There it's we go. Getting, getting crazy. There we go. Okay, DEFCON 1 in a few minutes. <laughs> then you're going to see some serious shits. Hold on to your butts. Hold on to your asses, assholders. Right, air defense, air defense, yes. Um, how are my fighters doing? Brilliantly. Yeah, they, they've they really... Oh, well, DEFCON 1 soon. Here we go. I'm probably not going to do so great. Right. 
my fleets have been largely eliminated, so I'm just going to carefully sneak out of the way. Also, I'm going to go... Right, I still have most of my fighters, so let's head... Yep, that's okay. Oh, we back to real time. Yeah, yeah, what happened there? Well, I decided to slow things down since we are at two minutes to bombing time. Oh, okay. Two minute warning, as it were. Yep. That's okay. Two minutes is enough time for me to do what I want. God damn it! Why are right, you mad, bro? Huh? You yeah, mad, why? bro? You mad? Uh, somebody has currently outsmarted me. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm thinking I'm gonna John Madden it up over this thermonuclear war. That's the only way to do it, as far as I'm concerned. I'm thinking I'm gonna destroy what's left of Arthur's fleet. Go for it, buddy. Now, see, the way you win the thermonuclear war is you become the last man standing. When you're the last man standing, well, then that means that you've won the thermonuclear war. Yep. Yeah, there is, um... <sighs> West Germany is doing its damnedest to get revenge <laughs> on the Russians. <laughs> oh dear. West Germany still exists in this uh, game? Well, yeah, this game is, ba is based on the idea of a uh, early 80s gotcha, thermonuclear okay. war. That makes a lot more sense. A modern thermonuclear war would basically be Russia firing off what they had left, the United States bombing everyone, blaming the rest of humanity for not being Christian enough, and then the Republicans wake up because no one would actually use nuclear weapons. Alright, seems that my timing wasn't there, but was pretty good, because by the time DEFCON 1 became available, I already had bombers on the way to Psy Alpha Silo, which means that the exact moment he, they got the go order, they just dropped the nuke and instantly destroyed one of his silos. That is incredibly good. Because that basically ends half of his resistance on that front in an instant. Now then. Let's get rid of these assholes. Now, as you have probably realized, all you watching, there are a lot of different tactics you can use here, and by you can either conserve what vessels you have, or just go all out and completely crazy and blow the shit out of everything. Oh dear, Sayapa has launched.
Hexagon is also launched. We are preparing him to launch over there and over there. Shit is going down all over the freaking place. In all likelihood, we are going to see a shitload of stuff coming in soon. That's going to be jolly good fun. Now then. Scroll out a bit and we can see that there is a sub-launch south of Madagascar. Launches have been detected from Hexagon in the Chinese mainland. Russia is just spraying shit everywhere. And now the J-Meister is launching as well. From where is uncertain? Oh, it was probably in the uh, ocean between South America and Africa. We're still not entirely sure who is going to hit who first or at all. Because as a general rule, we are... Well, so to speak, here comes the interesting part. I have no idea who are the targets of any of these things. All I know that is that there are shitloads of missiles coming in from everywhere. They might be coming from me, they might be coming from someone completely different. But it doesn't actually matter because, you know... Someone is going to get hit, and it might as well be me, so let's be paranoid. I launch everything. It would seem that the air defense in this area is rather weak, so I'm going to take that opportunity to bomb the shit out of everyone in there. Now, I might, it might seem that I'm focusing too much on one area here, but that is because if I can bring that area under control, the other side will be too concerned with fighting everyone else. Oh, we can see that India has gotten hit hard. Most likely either hexagon launches or sheaf launches from the Indian Ocean. There is a Psi Alpha nuclear weapon in transit. They are heading for my airbase and the airbase is likely going down. Lost quite a number of guys there. On the other hand, we do not seem to be facing all that much resistance on this end. It's going to be interesting to see how that ends up. Our poor bombers, on the other hand, are being completely ruined over here. As you probably figured out already, it seems that Team Orange is in quite a beneficial position here, since they outnumber everyone else. Also, I find it sort of interesting how there is all the sound has disappeared from my game for some reason. Not entirely sure what's up with that. Seems that the J Meister's coastal cities are taking quite a bit of bombing from my end. 
very nice. Sayath has nuclear weapons, most likely heading for the central parts of Europe. Yes, I am very alone just now, actually, because all my sound on my end just died randomly for no apparent reason, and I can't hear anything from the Skype chat either. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that, but uh seems that everyone watching the stream can hear something, at least. As long as you can hear me, that's all you're here for anyway, right? Yeah, I figured as much. But I suspect that it's a problem with the audio repeater. Let's see, what's even going on in Europe at this point? Oh dear, that is not a good thing. Losing a radar is a huge blow because it instantly removes our ability to see what the heck is going on on that end. So we're going to have to do the rough thing and just send people blindly in there and hope for the best. On the other hand, while the radar does blind... losing a radar blinds me a bit, it does not actually remove my ability to... launch anything, which means that I can still be uh, competitive. I can, of course, also take the chance to counter-launch. Hope that the fact that I am working with decent time, be able to launch something at least. Greeter, yes, I can see your text. <laughs> so please do not share secrets. Go, go, South America. I suppose. Well, I'm in a decent second place so far. Well, that is perhaps not the absolute best place to be. It's decent enough. J. Meister is clearly in the lead, mainly because, well, the con concentrated forces of South and North America basically ruined the hell out of my fleet in the Atlantic. But on the other hand, I'm doing rather well in other parts, especially now that I've taken out one of the African silos on the western coast, which is a very nice bonus. I like that. Thank you very much. Let's see if we can land this one. Salvador is... gone. Now we see that the Giant Maester is starting to open up his... Grand Silos. It'll be interesting to see exactly what we can do with that. Greeder is launching as well. Not entirely surprising, we're quite a bit into the exchange, so, so to speak, so at this point you have to make a rather quick choice in that you either launch what you have in hope that you can cause damage before you are taken down, or you share 
basically save everything and hope that once everyone else is done with their exchanges you have enough to just ruin everyone's shit with impunity. Need to generally go for bottom to two. Now, Solemper suggests that we go for America because it's unharmed. Well, here's the thing. North America and South, South America are allied, which means that it will be very difficult to actually get close enough to launch anything with anything resembling reliability. Nuclear missiles fired at the United States also have the problem of no matter where you are firing from, they have a very long flight path, so they can be intercepted by fleets and silos quite easily. The United States basically has a great geographical advantage in that regard. She was launching nukes by the dozen, I was about to say, but <laughs> not quite, perhaps. But there is a noticeable wave coming north from northern Africa towards southern Europe. That is of concern to me. And now the Jaymeister fleets that have finally taken care of my fleets in the southern Atlantic have moved up and they are probably launching now. Now, if Greeder is clever, what he is going to do here is that the very moment he realizes that Jaime has fired all of his missiles from the... Uh, his fleets, he will turn on him and turn South America into a hole in the ground. That is basically what a clever man would do at this point. And Jamie is a clever man, as is Greeder, so I suspect that Jamie has already predicted this and has a plan to handle that. Meanwhile, I should really launch my emergency bombers and try to cause some damage before I basically run out of delivery platforms, because the thing is, no matter what you do, no matter how many missiles you have lying around, if you don't have any way of delivering them, it doesn't matter. I can tell you that Chief is now going for the time on the tactic of things are looking down, so I'm going to launch everything. And while that will probably not help him score-wise all that much, it is a very viable tactic at this point, because if you are losing in a thermonuclear war, just open up on everyone, because the additional stress you put on their fronts might cause them to start collapsing. Okay, I think that I've just suffered my first hit on an actual city, and... Oh, it's Athens, who gives a shit? Let's see, this though is very bad. It seems that, yes, we have lost our second Eastern Radar, which means that we now have complete radar silence, more or less, over Russia, which is very, very bad. Very, very bad. Because this means that I can no longer detect Russian nukes coming in. It also means that Psi Alpha's aircraft will be able to launch without me immediately realizing, which can be a really, really, really painful experience. Of course, I have other concerns as well, as Jamie is doing his damnedest to take down my uh, bases and cities, I suspect, with sub launch nuclear weapons. Now, I really, really, really do not want that nuke to hit anything here, but because I suspect that he's either aiming for the radar or London, and London is a priority target. It has a huge population, which will mean that if they land a direct hit, they will make shitloads of points, and I will be weakened point-wise. So it says past the radar, which pretty much guarantees that either London or one of my silos further down into the uh, European inland is the target. 
but judging by the ballistic path, it's definitely London. Uh, we better hope that we manage to catch up to this thing and shoot it down, because otherwise London is going bye-bye. Freaking Welshmen. Trust them to launch at London the first thing they do. And we managed to shoot it down over Wales instead! <laughs> well, screw you, Yami. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Ho hoisted by your own petard. Whoa! Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Psi Alpha Yoss lost... What was that? 15 points due to a direct hit on Moscow. Oh, that has to hurt. That is a capital hit. That brings my points up and Psy Alpha's points down. Jeez. 13.6 million dead in a single hit. That's nukes for ya. Right, we have a sheaf nuke coming in from the south. Most likely aimed for either my radar or my silo. I would very much like it that was shot down in a hurry, please. We also have further Jamie nukes coming in, while those seem to be pretty fairly well aimed at. Seems that a hexagon is catching up in a hurry. Oh, and I just got the Explore Russia achievement. The Explore Russia achievement is done by, I think, hitting five different targets and causing at least 20 million... Casualties or something? Right, and there we go. There is the betrayal I was waiting for. But it's in the reverse. It's a reverse betrayal. Jamie has kicked out Greta. Yeah, and it seems that we received a hit on Madrid, did we? Can't actually see if there's anything there. Madrid has been wiped off the map. Italy is actually doing rather fine so far, mainly because there's not much there. <laughs> uh. Right, let's see. As you may have noticed that some silos are marked with triangles. Triangles are basically silos that have been turned over to nuclear delivery mode, so you can quickly keep track of where nukes might be coming from. And apparently I have a pair of bombers over here, but that's not going to help me all that much. Because those bombers do not have any nukes. You can tell if you hover over a uh, airport that you see those standing pointy things. Those represent nuclear warheads. Now, while a uh, nuclear warhead might still be... Uh, sorry, a bomber might still be useful. Even without a nuclear warhead, it is not terribly dangerous, is the thing. Now, let's see... Now, what I'm looking forward to is see how much damage Greedy can cause Jamie now that they he uh, or rather they have dissolved their alliance. It is also of great interest to me who he will prioritize as a target because he can still launch at me if he decides to go that path because he knows that. Jamie Meister, good old Jamie, has already expended quite a few of his nuclear weapons, which means that I am probably the greatest threat at the moment, especially since Europe, if it manages to survive, can deliver a lot of payload to many parts of the world in a hurry. Now, Sheev has opened up both of his, well actually all of his remaining seals in nuclear mode, while this is good for delivering a payload in a hurry, it is also a big risk on his side because silos that are not in anti-air mode will do nothing to stop 
my bombers. And since I have a SRB and bomber incoming towards the silos, you will either have to switch those back over to anti-air mode in a hurry, in hope of being able to intercept them, or he's just going to have to accept that I am going to drop nukes, so to speak, on his silos, most likely taking them out. Let's see, we managed to bring down one of the hexagon nukes apparently, but another one is coming in in a hurry. That is, looks like it's heading straight for Warsaw, which is bad news for me. Another hit in Moscow. Now we have Syatha subs launching, which is never a good thing. Why are you even shooting at that? <laughs> huh. I have all priority on shooting this thing before it reaches Warsaw, which is unlikely. It's very unlikely that we will be able to reach it before it hits Warsaw. I'm sorry, Poland, but I think this is it. No, wait, no. Oh, there we go. No, it's a direct hit. Brings Hexagon up a few more points. Now Greeter is launching nukes towards me at close range. That is not very fun. I don't like that at all. On the other hand, I have SRBM launches coming in soon enough at close range. So hopefully I will be able to cause some damage. Desperately checking around to see if I have any available fighters. I do not, but I do, however, have three bombers available. Huh. Let's see, let's check if we have any cities here that haven't actually taken damage yet. Oh no, Hexagon has dropped! Hope he will be able to get back. Well, it's a shame if we suddenly lose him. Apparently there's freaking nothing left of Warsaw. Ah, Hexagon is back. Oh, thank goodness. Jeez, I was scared there for a moment. It seems that Hexagon launched everything at Warsaw in the hopes that at least one of the missiles will be able to get through. And no, wait, that was a Psy Alpha nuke. No, wait, isn't... Why is everyone bombing Warsaw? Jesus Christ! Holy shit! Chernobyl 2! Oh dear, now we have a massive launch in the Atlantic. Oh dear. Yeah, those are all heading straight for me. That is not going to end well. Yeah, fuck Poland, am I right? And there we go, there we go. London is hit. Ow, oh, ow, ow, ow. Greeter is taking the opportunity now that he knows that Jamie can't form an effective defense and he knows that I'm busy to set a few hits on London. Doesn't really change the dynamic of the game all that much, but it is still annoying because it's going to cost me quite a bit of points. You see that I've fallen from 90 points to 77 now because I've suffered a capital hit. And we still have nukes from all over coming towards Europe. Shit. Someone must have noticed that I was in the lead and then everyone <laughs> launched at me at the same time. <laughs> oh, good lord. This is bad. This is really bad. I am being hit from everywhere right now. Everyone has teamed up on me, so I am probably going to just have to accept that I am going to be shot to shit at this point. No, not Praha. I love that city, damn it. Save them. No. No. Ow. 
wow, 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 wow. Hexagon keeps flying up and I keep tumbling down. Shit. Combine this with the completely redonkulous launches on the side of Greeter. I am in trouble. I am most likely going to be losing my lead very, very soon because holy shit. Oh, wait, wait. What's this? What's this? Sheaf is actually on his way to hit one of my silos with a nuclear weapon, it looks like. That will be an incredible blow to me if it's actually taken out. So I'm going to hope for the best and hope that a random number generator is with me and... Oh, it survived. It narrowly survived, but it did survive. There goes Rome. Crap. <laughs> And with that, Hexagon passes by, placing him in the lead would mean second place. And Sheaf has actually managed to climb up over Jamie thanks to dropping all kinds of shit on me. Jesus Christ. Seriously, Greta, why aren't you bombing Jamie? Oh my god, oh my god, United States of America, what is going on? There seems to be a short-range exchange between Mexico, Central America here, and the... Oh dear, Psy Alpha is joining the Yellow Alliance! <laughs> oh god, oh god, Hexagon, ally with me! <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, Psy Alpha and Sheep have joined forces, which means that I can expand what he has left completely on Europe and Asia, completely ignoring Africa at this point. Damn, I should have known better to than ignore Africa. Alright, since we've already irradiated this entire place and turned it into mush, let's just, you know, get on with it. There are still vi viable targets all over the area. So let's actually open up our first silo and see if we can't launch something. I have always been a late launcher in these games because I prefer to be able to cause as much damage as possible in the late game because I find that that is where the biggest upsets happen. Oh, poor Cliffs, why are you so mean? Right, so... Yeah, those Greeder nukes. Seriously, I am surprised that Greeder is going as ballistic, haha, as he is towards me while Yame is right next to him. But then again, I suspect that most of these nukes are fleet launched, so they were subs that he has been spending half the game getting in position to launch at Europe, so it's too late for him to actually change which way they're going. And in that case, there's really not much you can do. You're just going to have to accept that that's what, where you're going to launch, because you don't have any other targets, basically. Hurry up and launch, you idiots! There's a nuke coming! Hurry! Here we go, we got one off at least. Let's just hope it hits something. <laughs> Sire has battleships and carriers are still kicking ass. So we can actually show the stats here. Let's check. So far, Greeter is actually doing best for survivors, which is not surprising because it's pretty easy to keep the United States unhit, so to speak. I'm pretty much even with Hexagon at the moment. 
I'm hoping that a few more nuke launchers might be able to uh, switch things up. Oh, I want to get rid of those bombers, and I want to get rid of those bombers for right now. Get out of here, Psy Alpha Bombers. Oh, that was a nice takedown there. Oh, there goes Paris. Wait, a Psy Alpha nuke? Oh, he's fine. From, oh, he's fine from the Arctic. There you go. And it was sh apparently shot down on top of Paris. That's not good at all, actually. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, the entirety of Western Africa seems to be completely ruined at this point, so we're not going to have to worry much about that. And there we go. The United States have done what they knew they would have to do. Nuke Japan. Again. Why are you always so mean to Japan? What did they ever do to you? Right, Psy Alpha is definitely going to land this one in Kiev. There's nothing I can do about that at this point. And the J Meister is slowly, slowly catching up, and that is making me mad. At least my anti African silo is doing pretty well, actually. He's agreed a nuke, heading for Barcelona, most likely. Bucharest has been hit. Barcelona is gone. And that drops me. That drops me. I'm taking way too many casualties now, just as I expected once I, when I saw all these swarms of missiles coming from four directions. Basically, Psi, Alpha and Hexagon are firing at me from the east and north. Chief went full bore and just crazily expended all the nukes he had on southern Europe. And Greeders nuclear subs have come into position and are now just completely demolishing the west coast. Wow, I lost the silo and Paris at once. That is a huge blow to me. That is a huge blow. That's not one I'm going to be recovering from anytime soon either. I had a great early game, but now the late mid game is definitely turning against me. Hexagon on the other side, who was struggling just a little bit and beginning to actually get moving, has managed to gain a lot of momentum now. Mainly because I think that once he handled the uh, Pacific threats, he was pretty much set. Because Psy Alpha had most of his silos in the center of Russia, which means that the fire rate was slightly too long to fire at China. Yeah, Jamie, what are you doing? <laughs> I think he's using his Central American silos to wreak havoc on... Uh, whoa, ho, ho, dear. Yep, that was one hell of a hit. That's flung Jamie up the rankings. Jesus Christ. Now that was murder, all right. There are so many nukes here, I don't even know what to say. There is basically no way to defend against this sort of a heavy MRBM launch, which is what makes sub so extremely delicious. Now the question is, what exactly I shall do from this point? If I can make sure that Chief will stop launching from this point, which he should be doing now, because he's out of nukes in the entirety of the north, which would mean that I should have time to just switch over and react. Everyone's probably saying rude things about me in the call, but I don't really care at this point. I bet that everyone in the game except me is in the call now, so they're all conspiring. 
won't surprise me. Air Defense says, why are you firing at the completely unstoppable rain of nukes on Western Europe when there are actually nukes you could shoot down over the Eastern Europe? Could you please take care of those? Please. Thank you. Now then, let's see, we can bring that one down. Then we can go over to murder everyone mode. And once murder everyone mode is engaged, it never ends. Wow, Greeter is launching all the way. Wow, that must have been a long-range launch. Where is that even going? If that's heading for my silo, then I'm going to be very, very cross. I hope it's heading for my radar. Oh, oh dear. A hexagon airbase apparently has disappeared. Suits me perfectly fine, actually. All right. Time to cause some damage. In the word of Big Steve Hells, fuck you, Baltimore. Only Baltimore's over here. I wonder, is Baltimore even a city in this? I don't think it is. For some reason, the New York is up in. Wait a minute. That's not where New York is supposed to be. Auf Wiedersehen, Berlin. Nice going, Greta. See, am I the only one still... Yeah, I'm the only one who's asking for two... for one time, three at a time. Okay, let's speed things up a bit since we're getting close to the end, anyway. Off we go, lads. Fire everything! Also, holy shit, I actually have a silo in here. What the hell? Why was I not informed? Let's sneak off over here and see if we can't get some extra kills. I sincerely hope Planning Guard is not mine. Oh, there we go. Open up with everything! Whoa, youch! Sorry about that, one sheaf. Over here, Psy Alpha going for my silo and. It seems it survived. It's a hit, but it survived. 
J Meister is launching at Hamburg, which is hit for the first time. Victory timer has started. That means that less than 20% of worldwide nukes are remaining. That also means that once that victory timer goes down, that's the end of the game. Greedy wants to know what Hexagon is nuking, but that's a C. And yes, we are past peak nukes. Which means that this is the time where I just launch everything at Russia and go, yeah, yeah. Hoping to recover as many points as possible. But wow, seriously, I wonder. How many of launch nukes were aimed at Europe in this game? Because I feel like I've been taking quite a beating non-stop for the last 10-15 minutes. Let's see, has LA been hit? Yes, it has. Half the population is dead, roughly. Same in San Francisco. Right, there we go, I managed to empty my silo, just in time. Jamie might be able to destroy it with his next bomb here, but it won't actually matter, because I will not be launching anything more from that. Or maybe it's going somewhere else. Maybe it's aiming for München. Well, it's hard to hear that, München. Good luck with that. Now, as you may tell, there are a lot of my nukes that just disappear, because I'm not entirely sure what they are being shot down by. That is due to my lack of radar. So I basically just have to hope for the best. Let's see, we have one lone fighter here, so let's see if we can do our best to get rid of those bombers. I've been horribly mangled score-wise due to my ridiculous casualties. I have probably taken the most casualties by now, haven't I? No, actually not, apparently. Huh. Jamie and Greed are of course the ones that have suffered the least because they've only been launching at each other, more or less. Yeah, and Jamie is going to win, mainly because... yeah. It's not so much that he had a timely betrayal as people basically went, Oh, well, yeah, whatever. And then they all started launching at me instead. <laughs> Psy Alpha and I are basically just exchanging blows at this point. Kazan! And it's gone. Ach nein, Wien! Look at all the bombers. And here we go. Poof. What is blo blocked in the chat is nuclear subs. 
is the thing. Because there is a specific game com containing nuclear subs which we do not speak of in this chat. Come on, bring Hexagon down a bit so I can climb up to third place. Yeah, actually, hate to break it to you, Thomas, but apparently people care so little about Cleveland, it's not even represented on the map. You can't bomb Cleveland. Well, there goes my silo. Oh wait, what the heck? Hey! I have a bomber with a nuke on it! Here we go. My radar. I need that to see. I sincerely hope that Greeder has enough to smash the shit out of Yami because it would be such a shame if Yami is to win based on that stupid betrayal in the beginning. Hey, hey, no. Get up, get away. There we go. Okay, there are, there are nukes of four different colors raining down on Europe right now. I don't know, it seems a bit unfair. Why is everyone shooting at me? Eh, they don't like me, I guess. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I was about to say, Jamie, stop getting points. Let's greet a wind, damn it. Jamie, you race traitor, you. How dare you bomb the beautiful, wonderful countryside that bore you. Actually, come to think of it, go ahead. It's just Wales. What the heck are you guys doing? Seriously. Just hit the nuke. There you go, see? It's not that hard. Man, an alliance or two would probably have helped, but... Seeing as I'm playing as Europe, there's no way for me to ally, really. Europe doesn't do the whole alliances thing. Uh, 
Yeah. I realize I probably shouldn't have done so well in the first half of the game because that punished itself quite badly. Everyone just went crazy at the same time. Dropped everything they had on me. Well, at least my fighters are annihilating some carriers. Doesn't really mean much points, but it feels good at least. Pew pew. Pew. On. Sink it. You can do it. Kill the bombers while we're at it too. Make it so that they don't have anywhere to land. Come on, Greeter! Come on, Greeter! You can do it! Go, America! I suppose that yeah, I could just ally with Greed and now, and our Lions will automatically win at the end of the game, since we have more points total than Jamie does, but... Victory to Greeter! Alright, let's check the scoreboard. Right, Hexagon has the least survivors, so to say. He also suffered the most losses. We can tell that poor little me lost everyone, more or less, <laughs> there at the end. Well, my score isn't too bad. Still a bit sad that I was so completely horribly annihilated in the mid game, but you know. But not bad for the second ever multiplayer game I play of Defcon, I think. But a great end of the stream, too. Let's see, I wonder what is causing the. Need to be unable to hear you guys. Okay, Skype is grey for me for some reason. But it still shows activity? Hell? Now I'm not entirely sure what's going on. No, I don't think so, but I still... Everything seems to be in order. Yes, I Alpha, you launched a lot of nukes. That you did. That you did. Alright, let's see. Let's restart Skype. See if that helps us. We can check where the fleets were at. We can see that Greeter has a shitload of subs over on in East Asia, which makes sense. As did Chief. But it seems that Jamie has lost his entire fleet, actually. And his fleet action against me he took a bit of a hit, and then once he decided to end the alliance... No, oh, no, wait, right, right, they're blue. Shit. Let's see, who's where is? Right, here is the sub... -co group that completely annihilated Europe. 
And the hero JMS is battle groups that probably cleared out greedous groups. JMS are all Jamie also had subs down here. Which were right about to run into Sheaf's battleships. Alright. Let's check, does anyone have any nukes left? Doesn't seem like it. Hello, hey! Central Europe prevails! <laughs> Some of them made it. Alright. Well, that was a good game. Let me start Skype back up. We'll see if I can hear them this time. And I still seem completely unable to hear them, which is very, very weird. Alright, let's bring up our audio repeaters and see what's going on here. We can see that line 1 is not actually sending anything for some reason. There we go. There it was with the audio repeaters all along. As I can you hear us now, Arthur? Now I can hear you perfectly. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. We, we were talking behind your back in front of you all the time. Yeah, we well, were I'm not surprised. so much shit, you have no idea. Uh, Come on. I didn't do you... that bad thing. No, you didn't, actually. Um, Sheaf did alright, you know, he blew his load too early. Let's see, Greedy wants in shit, of course. Of course. Oh, I see how it is, Porklift. I see how it is. <laughs> no? Hello. Hello there. That was quite a match. That was it one was. hell yeah. of a match. Yeah. Well done, I, Reader. I realized quite early there that I should never have mentioned to the chat that I was ahead on points because holy shit did I pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it that was, was a yeah, pretty fun I client. Ba I basically <laughs> well, said, oh look at that, I have 90 points. And then suddenly missiles of every color of the rainbow <laughs> just started raining over Central Europe. <laughs> the, the, right. the, I targeted you first anyway. <laughs> The part that was making me die with laughter, Arthur, is I heard Jamie at the end talking to Greeter, suggesting that the two of them team up at the very end so that well, yeah. they would, you know, tie for the victory. So yes. I knew it was coming, and then you were like, what the hell? What's going on here? <laughs> we did go into an alliance at the end, at the last yeah. few seconds. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, really, uh, what, I sh what I should have done, really, the moment things started going south, was of course try to negotiate an alliance of some sort with Hexagon, but the thing is, I don't do alliances in Hexagon. It, it was either Greeder or Hexagon who took out my subs the moment they surfaced. Yeah, I noticed that the, one of your sub fleets just disappeared. Yeah, that, that was... I, I was sneaking it around and then all of a sudden... Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. There used to be a, there's supposed to be a fleet here. Yeah. Where did it go? Um, well, that's okay. We did all right. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> every, every I mean, seriously, about North, that was... North and South America is probably the most powerful alliance you can make in this game because it's an entire continent entirely separated from everyone else by the two largest oceans in the world. Ironically, so, yeah. if we'd gone from the Pacific, I would have been fucked. Mainly <laughs> because um, you have no one there. To be fair, though, this was also my first time playing multiplayer yeah, you, game. No, you you were fine. Um, like I said, Chief blew his load a bit early. Um, but yeah, it was my first time too, so pretty good match. Yeah, it was my second time. I should have performed better. <laughs> You know, Arthur, I just I, I launched fourteen nukes at once, Arthur. 
Yeah, and Greed is launched from an entire subfleet, the entire load, simultaneously at Western and Central Europe. Yeah, um, I should probably explain that. Pr um, pretty much it was that the match was going pretty, pretty slowly and I didn't know if, it's what, if, if it was going to end soon or not. And I just so, you know, my subs were almost there, I could hit some stuff with it. Might as well fire everything and hope that I get some stuff. I didn't expect to see what I did see. I even made a <laughs> screenshot of that. I can post it in the chat if you want. Please go yeah. ahead. I... You sort of you sort of lucked out with the timing there because at approximately the same time you launched, Psy Alpha was starting to go crazy on me, and she <laughs> launched everything. So my silos were so incredibly busy in southern and eastern Europe that by the time I saw that steady stream of blue bolts from the sky, I realized shit, this isn't going to work. Oh god, yeah. but, yeah, that that is brutal. <laughs> um, <laughs> Goodbye, London. I, I wish my subs had been closer to Sheaf when they went off, but I couldn't really wait because he'd already launched yeah. his subs. Well, I will yeah. openly admit that I fucked up big time with my sub fleets because I lost them way too early. I have to say it was kind of fascinating because I wasn't playing and yet just based on what I could glean from the Skype call, I kind of knew what several people's different strategies were, and Arthur had no idea, even though he was still in the Skype call and yeah. talking because he had running commentary. Ba so, basically, the moment the Skype call stopped <laughs> repeating, um, I immediately just went, Oh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's and, this? An unfair <laughs> tactical advantage all to me? Exactly. I could have invited Greeda to the call to make it even worse, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, uh, if it wasn't for the fact that there's a small image up in the top right corner of my screen showing who is in the call, I bet you would have invited everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I would have, I would have restarted. I would have heard Porklift eating only apples, <laughs> Greeter, Psy Alpha, shit. Half of the people in, in the stream chat would have been sitting there talking to one another. That would have been the greatest thing ever. What we should have done is just everyone gone into one alliance and just nuke the crap out of Arthur. Yeah, well, really what we should have done. Well, that's pretty much what you did. I mean, did you not see? <laughs> what the alliance part. <laughs> yeah, well, did you not yeah. see what happened to Europe about the mid late game? Yeah, there was, I mean, come on. Did you on. see what happened to China? <laughs> Who cares about China? <laughs> yeah, the so China thing, well, it was, again, I managed to get, yeah, around most of his fleet, and in the end, <laughs> all my subs are there. <laughs> yeah, I saw uh, once their game and the way your sub fleet was, and you, I mean, you were licking the coast of Japan, and at that range, you can pretty much just annihilate East Asia with impunity because there's no way to counter launch fast enough. Yeah, pretty much sent half my fleet to Asa, half of my fleet to China and worked out pretty well. Yeah, problem I was, was say, I wasn't able to nuke Jay. Sort, sort of unfair really, I lost almost all my subs but all of your subs reached perfect strategic positions somehow. <laughs> yeah, so you just ended yeah. up just sailing past everything. And I uh, just watched it all and enjoyed it. <laughs> And neither I nor Greeda really took that big a chunk out of each other. Yeah, I was about to say that I was actually really surprised when you left the Alliance that Greeda didn't just instantly annihilate South America. Well, that I couldn't. Because... Just, um, stuck with it. I, I literally waited until he started launching. <laughs> yeah, this the is why you should never ally with anyone. Especially not a Welshman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welshmen aren't allies. They're mercenaries. They follow the largest herd of sheep wherever it may go. More yeah. Welsh jokes! Yep. <laughs> yep. The problem well, was, was that... Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Greeter. <sighs> yeah, I seem to kind of interrupt everybody in this call. <laughs> sorry. sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Everyone's anyway... just talking too much. Um, yeah, what I want to say about nuking South America, well, was pretty much problematic because most of my stuff was not in good position. My silos yeah. were all down there and were about to protect all the nukes from coming in. 
I wanted to get Bombers here, flying most of the way, and when the nukes were just about to hit to get out of the alliance, but Jamie pretty much, yeah, went out of the alliance before I could do anything about it, and yeah, hmm, didn't work out, but oh well. Yeah, well, we, he, we had, still, uh, he had he had a plan to betray you from the start. I mean, that was pretty mo- that was pretty much obvious the moment you arrived. I mean, I know Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> there was yeah. no and way he would k- stick to that alliance. And no I way. heard him too. He he was scheming so hard. You guys have no idea. Rubbing his hands. But yeah, that's yep. the that's the only real weakness when you play in the United States is that in, you want to be able to have any sort of forward launch capa- capability. You have to sail your fleets away, and if you do that, you can't really do anything effective towards South America because you have an equal amount of silos and it's all vertical, which means that it's yeah. even if you try to launch everything at the same time, South America will have time to answer. Yeah. yeah. And the moral of the story is, in Death Don't Con, be Russia. never ally with me. <laughs> I was going to say Russia. the moral of the story is always make sure that the repeater is working, Arthur. Well, Jeez. it was working, and then it just suddenly stopped working a few minutes. You no, know, I know. Thing. It was really weird, because I think that first I stopped, you know, being heard by the stream. And then a couple minutes later, Jamie sort of dropped without dropping too. Yeah, and, and then, then I, all sound disappeared on my end. And then I went from <laughs> thinking that it was something wrong with my microphone to realizing that Jamie could still hear me. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? And then it was 45 minutes of flee. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> It was Jamie strategically hacking your computer. Yeah. Either he said that a or a spike into the system is activated on thermonuclear defense program. Either that or sudden javelin was uh, psychically fucking things up in his sleep. Oh, but. Jav. Ah. Uh. But yeah, it was fun. I, I yeah, it was fun. Uh, Next time, I... I'm not going to be stupid enough to pick Europe, though. <laughs> I did not enjoy being Russia. Yeah, Russia is also really, really tough to play, mainly because you're surrounded by everyone. Uh-huh. Which presents the problem that if you pick a target, you sure as hell have to hope that the other targets around you are busy elsewhere. Because the moment they realize that you have your attention turned either west, south, or east, the other directions are going to sneak up on you very fast. Yeah. Frida Which, I mostly yeah. decide to screw it and just start nuking you. Frida yeah, did I, know, something I quite noticed. Clever. Um, towards the end, he started taking out the radar stations. Yeah. Um, uh, that I made was a actually bit, yeah. a bit late. Yeah, but I, I made a big point out of that, actually, in my stream commentary, that uh, Sayafa got lucky and took out one of my eastern radars early on, yep. which def- definitely helped him later on, but once my western radar station started just popping off the map, that, I think, is where I really, really lost the game. Because mm. a concentrated sub-launch after blinding the western side of Europe, that's just a guarantee that you will completely annihilate the western seaboard of Europe. You are pretty much flying blind for most of that. I also yeah. like the Welsh nuke. It's just kind of, nuke shot down over Wales. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> You also made a comment about that. Oh, yeah, it yeah, was yeah, beautiful. Yeah. It was heading straight for London. I was basically going, no, no, shoot it down, shoot it down. And then, I, poof. And I'm the entirety sad. of Wales just disappeared. And I said, well, <laughs> hoisted by your own petard. I'm, yeah. I'm sad that the stream didn't hear that because Jamie just burst out laughing <laughs> so hard. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> Uh, Speaking oh of which, I wonder how much of Germany I nuked. I mean, enough, it was in the was range. I, I got about a third of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I interestingly it. enough, actually, there was a, this sort of strange strip in eastern Germany down through the interior of eastern Europe was actually rather fine. That's where all of my survivors were. <laughs> yeah, that part is probably the best defended one. 
<laughs> All the Slavs yeah, are sitting there and the bunkers peering up at the sky. It's always the problem with Europe that it's surrounded on all freaking sides, so the defense is always spread thin. Yeah, the I thing is, if, if things start collapsing in Europe, it goes to shit immediately. If yeah. you can hold out and just, just hopefully handle the Atlantic fleets, it can play out well. Yeah. But the moment any f- side falls, it just collapses like a house of cards. Yeah. If it rains, it pours nukes. <laughs> very much so, very much so. If it rains, it falls out. Ugh. I have to say, I'd like to think I'm still alive because I apparently ascended to some plane of existence where certain people could hear me and others were completely blind to my voice, meaning that I'm probably some ethereal being at this point and I just don't realize Try it Try pinching yet. yourself. Does that mean we should start worshipping him? him? No. Yes. Every, yes everyone already worships Fuchs anyway. Oh, no, I don't. they don't. Oh, that's right. Everybody loves Fuchs. I don't. Aw. You guys. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> Aww. Hey! Lynch him. He doesn't worship me. <laughs> don't make me start dropping him. You're never on. getting on this stream again, Sile, if you don't love Fuchs like the rest of us. Peer no, that's, that's okay. Plenty of people don't like me. Trust me. I'll just we have civ- civilian him. targets in Megadeths. Seriously, I just love the term Megadeth when it's <laughs> yeah. actually used in its proper context. Uh, well, that was incredibly fun. Yeah, and apparently the stream liked it too. Everybody yeah. liked it. Everybody liked it. It's well, a love not tonight. right now, which is no, not, not a not. bad thing at all. There's, there's not enough love in the world. By, by the way, I'm I'm up for payday. I don't know if anyone else did. I would, but I can't run it. <laughs> well, there you go. Actually, right, in the stream, not next week, but the week after that, we will be finishing with the multiplayer games of Payday the Heist. So those of you in the stream chat who own that game, feel free to contact me via the contact page on my site so that we can get you into a few games. Basically, add me on Steam. You should be able to find me. I'm the guy named Arthur D. Wolf. The only guy named Arthur D. Wolf. Yeah. I'm going to fix that right now. Yes, and oh, by the way, if you follow Arthur on Twitter... Make sure that it's at Arthur Wolf, because something that happened to me the other day that was pretty magical is I followed someone named at Arthur D. Wolf, and they only had one tweet ever, and it simply read, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I, just, I wish I knew who that was, because that's, I mean, because the thing, it's not me, and I have... I do not know of any other person in the world named Arthur D. Wolf. I mean, there is one guy, but the only thing we found was his obituary. The best part about it was it wasn't directed to anyone. It no, was it was just, just... What are you doing? Question mark. But now that you say that you found the obituary, I, I think I have an explanation for what happened. He tweeted that as someone was about to murder him. And then you saw the obituary after he was murdered. Except he was probably murdered well before Twitter. I was about to say that obituary was is scanned from a newspaper in like 1997 or something well, like it, that. Well, then it was time travel. That's the only He spoke it out loud and he then he started haunting an old hard drive that they use on a Twitter server somewhere. <laughs> no, it's actually you from the future who went to the past. Yeah, there and, you go. And tweeted. Okay. And tweeted. <laughs> was I basically trying to com- was I trying to communicate with myself, maybe? <laughs> yes, yes. I want my I I'll have to six, seven years of streamers and streams or something like that. I'm deeply alcoholic and just sitting in a bar somewhere where it's holy shit. And so I have to like stop myself. To ask your past self, what are you doing? <laughs> That's the only thing you do to stop yourself. Exactly. Tweet at yourself. Oh, God. Dark future. There is only Twitter. 
Yeah. <laughs> and now someone has found it and retweeted it at me, so I'm going to have to retweet it as well. I have I have no mouth, and I must tweet. The worst unicorn. <laughs> the red Let's bring this shit right up here. We can actually uh, bring it up yeah. on the screen here. Let's get Ooh. meta up in this bitch. <laughs> on the retweet, Arthur Wolf. Oh, he's just Wolf. He doesn't have any at the end. What are you doing? <laughs> Shit, let's check his profile. Oh shit, Alpha Wolf. Going to Paris, Monday morning. Oh, he has new right. tweets! Oh, he has new tweets! They're Holy all shit. from 2007 and then 19 April 2000, it ends. And then he magically returns on May 17th, 2009. This is so weird. For a single I... tweet. Here's the weirdest part, though. In English, please. The, the, wow. This whole thing is bizarre. And yeah. he's using slash me. Dun, dun, he's, dun. he's using IRC commands on Twitter. Man, this huh. is running deep. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting so into going the back to the time travel idea. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Who is he following? Somebody in Paris, apparently. But what are the things say in English? And why does he have seven followers? Who are they? I wish to know. He's following a fellow named Benoit. Kaki. Okay, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Arthur Wolf is followed by Rock Wolf, Ed Wolf, William Wolf, <laughs> and Gypsy She Wolf. Gypsy She-Wolf? It's oh, the Brotherhood of the Wolves. It, oh, that God. movie finally makes sense. He's a furry. <laughs> it's a pack of wolves. <laughs> Apparently, it is a pack of wolves. And they're just, you know, hanging out. With names like William and Arthur. <laughs> so, are you going to join them, or are you going to be a lone wolf? <laughs> <laughs> they spell it differently. Gypsy she wolf. Ah, there we go. Here we go. Wait, okay, that was a different person. Okay, now okay, now Emily is t retweeting the original. Let's have a look at the original. Who is this man? This mysterious man. Do, do, do. Why does he have followers? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Who is following him? <laughs> Samurai Fuchs, egg? okay, that makes sense. And Ayana Drake, who is Ayana Drake? I would have to contact her and ask, who is Arthur Wolf? Yes, that who is, is my, he? That is my Twitter, so you guys can all follow me at Samurai Fuchs. Everyone already does, I was about to say. No, a I couple don't. people don't. Check Ayana oh, Drake's but... profile, see if you can find out. No, no, so, it's not going to be that creepy. So I yeah, followed you know. that detective stream. I followed Arthur simply because I was so amused by that tweet. <laughs> <laughs> You're hoping he'll be <laughs> back. Ayana Drake is actually your wife in the future. You're just hoping that someday he'll tweet again in the far future and ask, "What are you doing now?" <laughs> 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 and then a few years later. What How were you now? doing? What were you doing? No, no, no. A couple of years from now, he says, Oh, that. And that's it. <laughs> I see. <laughs> that's disgusting. Tell me more. <sighs> oh, dear. Five years later, what have you done with your life? <laughs> Going back well, to the time travel time. idea. About time to wrap up, you reckon? Ah, uh, yeah, I think so. Reckon so. Reckon so. Uh, big, big ups to Hexagon and Sheep who aren't with us in the Skype chat, but yep. were very noble competitors in the uh, Defcon game and the only warriors there. I respect because everyone else is a dick. Hey, <laughs> 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 Sheep bombed you, bombed you too. Oh, what did I do what to deserve that? You killed 92 million people, roughly, I think. I only killed about 30... No, wait, that's how many I lost, I think. N not a bad day's work. 
<laughs> and that's the most interesting thing, that in real time it only took roughly two hours. <laughs> and... You know what? I was riding the last nuke. Doctor Strange love style. Or... Yeehaw. Or... Roxy Rocket. I, I was hiding in a bunker in the city <laughs> I live in. And interestingly enough, I actually placed the radar predator into it, and it survived, actually. So And I was on... I was on an ethereal plane, apparently. Exactly. I was hanging with El Presidente. <laughs> which is why in everything a, went to crap. In a hot air balloon, watching the nukes fly by. And I was Drawing in the subs silly faces on them. Yeah, he, Greedo was in the subs. <laughs> yelling at him to drive faster. God damn it, we have to reach them before the timer runs out. <laughs> <laughs> launch, launch, launch. Oh shit, he that just, rem so that just reminds me of that brilliant old sub-simulator game, Aces of the Deep, which had a German mode with voice commands. I really should in I really, right yeah, I really should install that. Do that, do that. You actually have a do gramophone it. on board, so you can put it up, and then you can put records on and open the hatch, so you can ride around on the Atlantic playing Mozart and German marching music. Why are we not playing this? You have to stream it. Yep. <laughs> and Frankenstein and I have always been absolutely just gobsmacked by one of the uh, sailors aboard. I think it's your main engineer who says it, because in later submodels you can deploy a snorkel to uh, get, get oxygen while remaining underwater. But if you do not have a model of sub that comes equipped with a snorkel, and you tell them to put out the snorkel, then he will look at you with the most confused look in his eyes and say, Snorkel? Was ist dein Snorkel? <laughs> and I'm just... You're a trained sailor in, of the Kriegsmarine on board a modern sub, and you have no idea what a snorkel is? Snorkel? What is that? <laughs> Some kind of weird slang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone head over to Wikipedia and check what a snorkel is, and you can come back and be in on the joke. <laughs> yep. But isn't the point not to be in on the joke? Because that is the joke. I actually um, went with a snorkel into a, um, an open, one of those big open swimming pools, public swimming pools, I don't know the word for it yet, and they told me to take it off, because snorkels weren't allowed in there. Nope. So they for those poke that people. don't know. Yep. Poke people. And also people, snorkel. yeah, people try to go snorkeling, but they don't know how to actually snorkel, so they end up drowning themselves in pools. That's what I learned when I took my diving certificate. Certified snorkel diver. He's a secret agent. I do not have a scuba license, though. I only have a snorkeling license. Or a snorkeling certificate. I suppose. Oh well. Enough about me. Enough about this game of all death and horror and etc. So I'm just going to run down the list and say thank you, Jamie, thank you, Fuchs, thank you, Greta, thank you, Psy Alpha, thank you, Hexagon, thank you, Sheaf. And am I forgetting someone? The stream. Well, I want to thank everyone uh, who came to the stream today, especially the people that came to the stream because of my tweet. Uh, thanks to you guys. You guys rock. Um, it was a pleasure, as always, Arthur. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, thanks, Porklift. Well, you know, everyone orders thanks, Porklift, every Sunday morning. I am thankful <laughs> for Porklift. I'm thankful for Pork. I actually got a video of him pork. still open that I'm going to watch when this ends, so... Awesome. Great. Right. Uh, well, thanks, eating only apples. Also, yeah, update yeah. Sims 3. If anyone, <laughs> if anyone else in the stream chat ever wants to have a play Defcon with us, let us know, shit. Just add me on Steam and I. Or send me a word on Skype and I'll. We'll arrange for something. It's a pretty cheap game, if nothing else. 
Yeah. I think that you can get it for just a few dollars here and there if you just keep your, keep an eye out. And shit, multiplayer games are great, and is what they are what streams are made for. So we'll do this again sometime, definitely. Yep. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thanks for, yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next week. Hooray! Goodbye, people. Mega death. Bye, Greer. Bye, Zinooks.